In 2020, the CZU lightning fire burned over 86,000 acres in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Post-fire rains bring the potential for severe erosion due to the loss of vegetation cover and root systems that typically hold soil in place. In most locations, natural regeneration is the best option for post-fire restoration. Fallen leaf litter from burnt trees, roots left in place from burnt vegetation, and plant regrowth are often enough to protect the soil. When natural processes are not enough, other measures may need to be deployed. One option to reduce erosion is the installation of wattles, also called fiber rolls. Wattles are straw-filled tubes that help slow down runoff on slopes, thus reducing erosion. Erosion control is the process of stopping soil from moving in the first place. Another way that erosion can be controlled is by slowing water as it moves down a slope. Wattles do that. So they're an erosion control measure in that they stop the energy of the water moving down the slope built up by gravity and make it start over as it filters through the wattle. They also are a sediment control measure because as they stop that water that has soil entrained in it, uh, the soil particles fall out behind the wattle. And so they're doing both erosion control and sediment control in terms of stopping sediment that's already entrained in water from moving any further. Proper installation of the straw wattle is essential to ensure its success. They should not be placed in the path of high water flow or in any areas of concentrated runoff. If installed incorrectly, it may not only be a waste of time and money, but it can do more damage to the landscape than having no erosion control at all. Prior to installing any erosion control device, consult with a professional for proper siding and placement. There are two types of wattles, fiber netting and plastic netting. Fiber netting wattles are biodegradable and in some applications may be left on site to decompose and allow vegetation to grow through them. Plastic netting wattles, however, will eventually need to be removed because they will not fully degrade and can entrap wildlife. Using a straw wattle around uh, like a toxic cleanup area, it may be better to use the plastic because it doesn't fall apart as readily uh, since it's not biodegradable and you're gonna be wanting to remove it anyway. 99% of the time, this is a better choice than the plastic ones, yeah. In addition to having two types of wattles, there are two types of installation. In Caltrans Type 1, the wattle is placed in a trench. In Caltrans Type 2, no trench is required. This video covers Type 1. There are several steps involved in Type 1 wattle installation. Please use the additional references included with this video for more details. Before describing these measures, it's important to reinforce safety precautions that should be observed when working in affected areas. Make sure you have gloves, eye protection, such as safety glasses, boots, steel toe preferred, and hearing protection if you'll be placing and pounding metal stakes. If working in post-fire conditions, make sure that the ground is no longer hot. It's also critical to be aware of dangers such as voids in the soil. Voids are unseen holes in the ground, perhaps caused by burnt root systems covered over by leaves or ash. Take special precautions when working in ash. Avoid direct contact with ash, including contact with skin, eyes, or mouth. People with lung issues, children, and pets should not be allowed in or near areas with ash or contaminated sites. Assemble the tools needed for installation. These include a level, measuring tape, mallet, excavation tool, such as a shovel, mattock or pickaxe, stakes, extra stakes recommended for breakage, flags, and the wattles themselves. Begin the process by walking the work area and use flags to mark where the wattles will be placed. They should be laid out on contour or level to the slope. The length and slope of your land will determine the number of rows and wattles needed. In general, place 20 feet apart for gentle slopes, 15 feet for moderate slopes, and 10 for steeper slopes, as this is critical for proper function of wattles. Refer to the associated handout for detailed specifics on placement. 
Placing models on contour is critical to the success of your project. Vertical spacing for slope installations should be determined by slope and soil type. Using a string level or laser level, adjust your flags to identify exactly where to place the waddles. You want to make sure that it's put in on contour. And what does that mean? That means level across the landscape. If you imagine a topographic map with those contour lines, you want the waddles to follow those lines. Excavate the trench to the needed depth across the slope on contour or parallel to the slope. Trenches should be smoothed as much as possible before installation. Well, that's how you get good ground contact and keep the water from running underneath. Lay the first straw waddle snugly in the trench. No daylight should be seen under the waddle. It is critical that the waddles are installed perpendicular to water flow on contour. Use the level to confirm that the waddle is placed correctly. Wood stakes are recommended to secure the straw waddles over metal pins. Wood stakes will eventually biodegrade. For softer soils, use a 24 inch stake for greater security. For harder, 18 inches is sufficient. If the soil is really hard, you may need to use a roto hammer or metal rod to create a hole prior to placing the stake. The stake's diameter should be approximately one inch to make it easier to drive it through the waddle. Stake waddles at each end, placed six inches from the edge, then four feet on center. Stakes should be driven through the middle of the waddle, leaving two to three inches of the stake protruding above the waddle. Waddles can be pulled off stakes if they are driven down too low. It may be necessary to make a hole in the waddle with a straight bar or knife in order to get the stake through the straw. The stake should always be installed perpendicular to the slope. If this is a high traffic area, we recommend marking the stakes with something brightly colored, such as paint or a piece of fabric. Pack soil from trenching against the uphill side of the waddle so that water flowing down the slope will not run under the waddle. Backfill any gaps on the downhill side as well. One other thing to, to make sure of here, you know, as you're doing this installation is checking the back of the thing and making sure that, that the soil is tight to it. Sometimes you may want to push the soil into that gap a little bit. And you might even want to walk along it and kind of tamp it down because you really don't want the water undermining these things. That's another way that you can cause more harm than good, even if it's pretty flat, is by having a spot where it gets undermined and the water starts to flow into that and starts to concentrate. Coming along and checking the back of it, making sure there's no gaps underneath, you know, maybe pushing the spoils from your digging up against it. You don't want to fill up the whole freeboard because you do want, you know, it to be off the ground so it can catch sediment but you, you definitely don't want there to be gaps. When using more than one waddle across the slope, overlap by at least a foot. When overlapping waddles, be sure to widen the trench to allow for the overlap section and then stake the overlap for security. Once placed, turn the final ends upward to prevent runoff from going around the roll. Before and after each storm, verify that your waddles are still properly installed. Stakes should be secure and waddles undamaged. It's important to note that when accumulated soil reaches half the height of the waddle, the soil should be carefully removed to the original level. The typical waddle performance period is one to two years, depending on type and the intensity of the surface flow it is exposed to. After this period, stakes may need to be removed for safety. And if plastic waddles were used, carefully remove all the plastic netting, leaving as much new vegetation and soil as possible. Loosened soil may need to be tamped back down. And it's important to note, waddles are not designed to be reused. Waddles are a convenient, quick solution to erosion but it is important to keep in mind that if done incorrectly, they can cause more damage than good. Waddles can become expensive, and often it may be confusing to know how many is enough or is too much. When erosion is found on the landscape, 
it's highly recommended to consult with a licensed expert. Their guidance can provide specific recommendations that will ensure waddles are used correctly and will rectify the problem. Your local resource conservation district can provide a no-cost, on-site evaluation of your erosion control needs.